Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's a lot to say about Mary that's really special and unique, and it took centuries and centuries for the church to formulate uh, exactly how to describe the mother of God. Centuries. And it's as if something, Mary is something that's so special and so beautiful that it took that long to, to sort of understand who really she is. And so in the later ages of the church, we, we finally formulated the, the, the uh, vocabulary of she's the you know immaculate conception. She was assumed into heaven, body, and soul. These were traditions that were very, very ancient, but the final formulation only happened in the 1800s and 1900s. But today in the gospel, I'm going to pay attention to how did people understand and think about Mary from the very beginning, from the first century, from the time when the gospels were written. What is it that Luke is paying attention to in her life that he wants to make us notice? And I actually really love the gospel today because it shows us what's so special about her in a really subtle way. And I have a feeling, I remember I was in, in the seminary and one of my classmates asked me, he was like kind of being critical, you know, suspicious about things, kind of overly doubting. And he said, you know, this immaculate conception thing, she was without any sin. She never was, even from the first moment of her conception, and her whole life she never committed any sin. And he was kind of like bugging me about it. He said, how, how, how could nobody notice that? And I said, I just thought about it for a second. I said, why would somebody notice that? Somebody who has imperfect eyes, who has sinful eyes, is going to see everybody as sinful. So you'd have to be sinless in order to notice that Mary is sinless. Because we judge each other all the time. We always give each other the worst possible interpretation. And in fact, I think it would require somebody, I think it requires God's grace to give us eyes to see Mary for who she really is and how really amazing she is from the very beginning. Not just the titles and the fact that she's the queen of heaven. All that's amazing. But it's there from the very beginning. The first moment of the conception of Jesus in her womb, look at who she was. An angel comes to her. He says, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And she's troubled at this greeting. From the very beginning, Mary is suspicious. She's sinless, but she's not naive. She's not ignorant. He says, Do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. You will conceive. You'll bear a son. You'll call his name Jesus. He will be son of the Most High. Imagine. You're a young woman and Somebody comes to you and says, your son is going to be amazing. He's going to be this and all these great things. Naturally, you and I would probably, oh, that's great. That's all I ever wanted. And all, anything, everything any parent wants is for their children to be amazing people like that. And so this angel is coming to her and saying, this is what your son is going to be. And how does she react? She says, wait, what are you talking about? How shall this be, I, for I have no husband? First of all, it looks really clear from, from this moment right here, Mary's intention was not to have any children. Otherwise, this question makes no sense whatsoever. If somebody's a, they, she was just betrothed to Joseph, if that was a, just a normal betrothal and their intention was to live as a normal married couple and have a bunch of kids, why wouldn't Mary ask this? Makes no sense whatsoever. So she asks because it looks like her intention from the beginning was to not have kids. And so she asks. That's Mary's personality. That's what's amazing about her. Is that she asked. We would call this, I don't know, critical thinking. We would call this stubbornness, maybe. That's how Mary showed her sinlessness at this moment. Because when someone is given an offer that's amazing, that's too good to be true, when Eve, at the beginning of human history, when Eve saw something that she wanted, she saw this fruit, and she said it was beautiful to the eyes, it says in Genesis, it was beautiful to the eyes, and it was to be desired for her. For, providing wisdom, for giving wisdom. Eve saw something she liked and she took it. That was Eve. 
That's what we do as sinners. We see something we like and we do it. Mary is sinless and the first example of her sinlessness is this question that she asked. She was given an amazing offer, something beautiful that anybody would be just crying at in joy. And Mary did not let her desire for something cloud her judgment. She had to make sure this was from God. And even though this was an angel, Mary is not ignorant. She knows the devil can disguise himself as an angel. And just because somebody comes to you acting all holy and saying holy things and talking about God, Mary's smart. And we think of Mary as a pure and innocent and, you know, all these beautiful kind of feminine passive qualities and she is all of those but she's also tough and her question implies no that's not going to happen unless I give you permission and I'm not going to give you permission unless I know this is from God and maybe you're shiny and an angel and whatever but I don't know who you are and I'm troubled by you saying hi to me she's troubled at the greeting so Mary is not you know, gonna be gonna be fooled and taken advantage of the way Eve was. And Mary's sinlessness is not first reflected in her saying, I am the handmaid of the Lord. That's not where it first shows up. It first shows up when she's troubled at the greeting of the angel. And it's expressed when she says, How shall this be? I need to know the details now. I need to know how this is gonna happen before I determine whether it's really the, the will of God. I'm not going to trust you because I don't know you. That's Mary and her sinlessness. Then when it's explained, the power of the Most High, the Holy Spirit will come. She's convinced, okay, this is really from God. Then and only then does she agree to this. Mary is a, she says later in this gospel, she says, I am my soul magnifies the Lord. That means when we see her, when we look at her, we see through her to God. And God is clearer to us when we see him through her. Absolutely. But it's not just her in her prayers for us, which she absolutely, absolutely prays for us. But it's also her as an example and model of Christianity, as a model of sinless humanity. And as we strive for that sinfulness only by the grace of God, the same grace that gave Mary the sinlessness that she had in preparation for Christ. Look, we, we should look at her during this Advent season as our mother and as the mother of the church and as the queen of heaven and earth, but also as an example to all of us. And especially today, reflect on her not agreeing to things right away. Thinking about it, stepping back, not letting her desire, the, the attractiveness of this thing, cloud her judgment. But asking first, is this really from God? Before she does anything, before she moves a step, before she even says a word of agreement, she doesn't entertain it until she knows it's the will of God. Those questions, this criticalness, is the, the example that we have from her. And as we approach um, Christmas, we, we let us uh, uh, follow her model and her example.